the motion mover has ably demonstrated how by each of conduct the embattled governor, David governor, grossly violated the constitution of Kenya, which he swore to uphold and protect. Criminalists illustrated and received a bribe and obtained money by false pretense contrary to the Bribery Act and the Penal Code Cap 63 of the laws of Kenya. As a state officer, contravenes the tenets of leadership and integrity under the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012. Honorable Speaker, the Deputy Governor needs to, to be held accountable for receiving a bribe of 800,000 from one Dennis Mokaya Misati, also due to helping secure an employment with, with the Nibusi Water and Sewage Company, in which Kisi County is the major stakeholders. Honorable members, I want to emphasize this point that WASCO is an, a limited company and therefore it is only operated or some actions are only carried out out by directors. Therefore, it defeats logic why the deputy governor was soliciting money by extension, taking it to the managing director or sending it to the managing director who he knows properly that she doesn't have the power <coughs> to employ. So, honorable speaker, you may remember that on 25th August 2022, the deputy governor took and subscribed to out of office in the manner and the form prescribed by the first stage of the County Government Act 2012 and in compliance with the Article 74 of the Constitution. He subsequently proceeded in compliance with the Leadership and Integrity Act 2012 to sign and subscribe to the Leadership and Integrity Code in the manner and form prescribed by ESCC in the presence of ESCC officers and a high court judge. Therefore, his conduct can only be described as gross misconduct. Honorable Speaker, the conduct of the deputy governor fly in the face of values and principles of governance enshrined in Article 10 and 232 of the Constitution. They include rule of law, integrity, transparency, accountability, human rights, good governance, fair competition, and merit as a basis of appointment. Honorable Speaker, this draws me to an intention of the deputy governor trying to influence an appointment, therefore, A, not having the process to take its due process. The conduct of the deputy governor is a clear case of abuse of office, Section 46 of the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crime 2020-2003 states that a person who uses his office to improperly confer a benefit on himself or anyone else is guilty of an offense. Honorable Speaker, this <coughs> Honorable Speaker, sorry. This is a divine moment for this house to demonstrate that it doesn't condone acts of impunity and the violation of the law. We need to send a clear signal to the nation that as a constitutional organ, we must demonstrate fidelity to the law and the spirit of constitutionalism. As I conclude, Honorable Speaker, I want to state that integrity and leadership values require that we become above God. <coughs> that the deputy governor has indeed demonstrated that he doesn't arise 
to the location by giving the Kisi County where the person in question who is the Excellency Dr. Munda is an elder in a church, an elder in an SDA church. So what are we saying? We need to demonstrate that indeed it is wrong <clears throat> and even soliciting a 36 year old with 800,000, where does he think if him as a deputy governor has not been able to be comfortable with the salary that he's getting and subjecting a young man of 36 years to be requested to give 800,000, where are our morals as a society? Honorable Speaker, I want to second the motion and implore again, again uh, uh, against, make a plea to my honorable members that as a house, we did also swear to protect and uphold the Constitution. And therefore, this is a call for all of us to stand and be counted in this important process. We must be fair, we must be objective, and we must be firm even how we execute our mandate as an honorable house. I beg to second the motion.